What's up, traders? Happy Sunday. So first, I want to apologize. I've had a cold, and so I sound probably, my voice sounds probably a little bit off, but bear with me here. So something real exciting, gang. I finally got this next iteration done, and this time I now have the buy sell zones, which is the market structure indicator. I have them plotting the percentages of the volume inside of each zone. So all this now is happening automatically. If you recall in the last video, I had to actually manually draw a range on each zone, which is pretty much useless because, look, I, I, I'm too busy. I don't, I don't live in front of the screen, okay? So I have to have all of this set up to where it can alert me, and then it just seamlessly um, flows to where I know there's a trade setting up and I can execute a trade. So as we've discussed, and I don't have all of this together yet, but um, I, it, it's all going to be done soon and we'll then be able to really start digging in. But next week I'm going to have all the alerts put together. So the alerts will be firing. I'll be receiving emails based on very specific parameters. And then from there, I'll actually be able to log in from my phone to my computer and execute positions. Now, the piece where I can execute positions automatically is not done yet. That, but honestly, that is probably the least important piece to all of this. As long as I can be alerted, and as long as I have these zones printing um, automatically with all of the volume associated with them, then the rest of it will take care of itself. I can catch all the trades that I need to catch just with these couple tools because if you notice I'm using a 60 minute time frame potentially a 15 minute once I get some of the automation put together so what I thought we would do today is just take a quick look at the zones so you can see for yourself exactly just how powerful they really are and how cool it is to see the volume associated with them so let's start with this chart on the right the 240 minute chart that's what I'm using for my high time frame and then from there I I moved down to a 60 minute chart is where I'm gonna execute my trades and on a 60 minute chart I'm gonna risk a dollar to make five dollars as I move down time frames I can risk a dollar to make more but at the same time it's kinda nice to get in and out of a trade so the more that I, the higher my target, the longer I'm going to be in that trade. And I think most of you guys, if you've been trading for any period of time, probably would agree with this. But you only need one thing that you do really well when it comes to the markets. So if you have one good trade, and that trade allows you to open it up to many markets you have your edge and all you need to do is exploit that edge as many times as you possibly can and guys you, you can make a living doing this in fact you can make a very comfortable living and that's what I've done here gang I, I have one thing that I want to focus on and I just want to perfect it and I want to learn everything that I possibly can about that one thing and for me it's structure and volume it all started with structure and then once I realized I could analyze volume, automated, now I can really understand structure, right? Okay, so if we start here on this chart on the right, what I want you to take note of is the only zones that are printing here are zones that are above, that are 15% or higher. You see percentages like this, 11 and 7, those are printing because there are zones that are there, but they didn't meet the criteria, so the actual zone itself did not print. Here's a 12, okay? But what, what I want you to take note of is look what happens when you come into these areas that have these higher percentages. Now, it doesn't always work out. Here's a 15 that doesn't, doesn't do anything. But here's a 21. So this 21 is associated with this zone. This 18 is associated with this zone because that's when it confirms. This 32 is associated with this zone. 
So you can see as price comes in, you get some nice reactions. Now, all I need to do is take trades out of these areas and I can further filter them by requiring the same high percentage in my zone on my lower time frame, which I call my trading time frame. Make sense? The other thing you see in these zones are these blue lines. These blue lines, what they represent are the actual highest volume price in the zone. Now, to be honest, I haven't found them to be useful. So I'll probably just disregard them and get rid of this blue line. Because the, the fewer things I have on my chart, the better off I am. And I thought it'd be something that might be useful where I could place limit orders. But I don't think it's going to be. So I'm just, I'm just moving on. All right, so what I want to do now is let's go take a look at a, the, the 60 minute. And what I have here on my 60 minute is I have what's called my, my buy sell zone overlap indicator. And it only prints zones if it overlaps with a zone on the high time frame. Now you're not, you don't see zones like right here. I don't have a zone on the high time frame because it doesn't meet my volume criteria on the high time frame. But there's actually a zone there, and you can see the percentages here: two percent, five percent. Here's a three percent. So these zones here on my trading time frame happen to have happen to overlap with a zone in the high time frame. Now I don't have the volume indicator done on the overlap indicator yet. So what I've done is I've I've I have my volume range indicator on my trading time frame, so I can see the percentages. And I only want to pay attention to zones that are above 15%. So here's a 19%. Price does not make it back in. So I would have missed the trade. Here's a 17% and price does come back into it. And you get a nice move out of there. This is enough for me to hit a target. All right. So let's continue looking back to the left here. Here's a 20% and a 17. So look what happens here. Price comes into this area. I'm with the trend on both my high time frame and my trading time frame, and I get a beautiful move out of here. So you can see here's a 19%. I guess we already looked at that one, sorry. But between this move and this move, you have two really nice targets. Gang, I could lose my next nine trades and be break even. That's how powerful this is. Let's continue looking. Here is a here's a zone. Now this is a, this is a perfect zone because I'm in a 25% zone on my high time frame and I have an 18% zone here. This is the perfect trade. Now if I only wait for these, I'm going to have very few signals per year, but that's okay. Right? Because I can open it up to 500 plus stocks if I you know, that's just if I'm on the S&P 500. I could I could do the Nasdaq 100 as well. So this this is enough to hit target. And you can see here I then print a 31% zone right here, which is also enough. So if you look at this area guys, I have 1 2 3 four trades. All four of those have hit target. Talk about a killer couple of months, right? <clears throat> We continue going. Here's a 24% zone. Look at this one. Excuse me, I got a cough. My apologies. All right, here's a here's a here's one that doesn't work out. It's also against the trend. This one's against the trend too. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know that I would have taken either one of those. Here's one. This Remember I said above 15%. This is 15% exactly on this side. I would not be taking a trade up there. Here's one that works out real nicely. It's 6%, but unfortunately it's 6%. It would not hit my radar. Here's a 27% zone right here. Again, this one's against the trend. What are you noticing here, guys? Well, I may not need that trend, but what's something else that we notice on this trade in particular? I'm inside of a zone on the high time frame that is 32%. And then I print a 27% zone on my 60 minute. My 240 minute chart is with the trend, while my 60 minute chart is against the trend. 
Is this a trade that I should take? Potentially. Look, I have not had a chance to test this in great detail like I do with all of my systems. So once that is done, I'm going to know exactly how to proceed. Um, so not, I, I would have missed all these trades. These are all with the trend. They're not. They don't hit my 15% um, criteria. Um, here is a 30%, um, but it doesn't ever set up. It goes right through and never gives me an entry. So I would have missed any trades here. Let's we'll see if we have anything else. Here's a 28% zone that never comes back to hit to um, allow me in until down here, at which point it turns against the trend. And if you look at my high time frame zone, it's at 16%. Um, I mean, honestly, just get, based on what I'm seeing here, I would take this trade, okay? And it would end up being a loser. Can't win them all, right? Okay, so I just thought I'd show this. Now, let me show you guys real quick the the 15 minute and what my idea is on the 15 minute. And the, the reason I want to do this potentially is because <clears throat> I'm not going to have that many trades on the 60 minute. And so I thought, you know, if there's a way I could just add some nice trades, then why not? All right. So what I'm looking for here on the 15 minute is anytime I'm inside of a high volume zone on my 240, I then want to come into my 15 and look for a double digit zone. So anything that's 10% or more, I'd take a trade out of. And you can see it just doesn't happen very often. Let's we'll see if we have any overlaps here. Nope. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to rip through. Here's a, Okay, so here we go. Here's a 10% zone. Uh, would have had a trade right here. That would not have worked out. Here's a 16% zone that is an overlap. It never gives me a chance to get in. So on here, so here's what you sacrifice on a lower time frame. You're going to have more trades, and that's not necessarily a good thing. More trades, probably lower probability. Okay. So here's here's another one where um, I would have had a loss. So you can see that right now, this isn't really that impressive, right? The 60 minute is where we want to be. Okay, here we go. Get a couple, we get some nice trades through here. Let's make sure this high time frame. Yep, that is a high volume zone. So here you would have had a nice winner. And that's, and that's a really solid risk reward trade right there, guys. Here's another one. So now we'd have an entry here. We'd have had multiple entries here. And, and so if I'm in this trade, I'm not going to be in this trade. So one or the other of those are going to hit your hit a target. Okay, here's another another zone where um, I'm above 10%, and you can see it doesn't work out. Here's one, 13%. This one does end up working out. So you can see um, this. I mean, it looks pro it looks profitable, right? Here's a here's a zone, 13%. It's not going to work out. Anyway, I I don't I don't have a I don't want to go into just a ton of different charts, but I thought I'd show you guys a taste of a handful of different things. Um, let's let's take a look at um, at at the um, where is it? Hold on, Nasdaq. Yeah. All right. So this is this is interesting, gang. Now this would be day trading, okay? I'm I'm not I'm not day trading, but for those of you who who do. I want you guys just to take a quick glance at any zones that are 10% or higher and what happens. So again, what I'm looking for is a zone that is above 10% and with the trend. Now this is at midnight. I'm not obviously going to catch this trade, but it's still, it's, it works out really nicely and you could create a very simple auto script that would trade these while you're sleeping. Here's an 11% zone. Price comes into it right here, and you get a move out of there. Uh, I mean, this guys, this is uh, what 26 points. It's pretty good. None of those zones were are, are above 10. Here's a here's a 28% zone with the trend right at the open. How many of these trades do you need in a weekly basis to make good money? Think about it. What if you had a basket of futures? 
So maybe NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow, and the Russell, and you you had a program that would alert you anytime there was a zone that was above 10%. Then you come in here and execute your trades. You're not going to have very many of them, maybe one or two per day if you're lucky. I don't even think you're going to have that many. You got a killer system, okay? Here's a 13% zone right here, all right? Now, this one is not with the trend, okay? So I would have missed out on it until it came in here. Now it's neutral. N neutral is not with, it's not against. I'm okay taking a neutral trade. Here's a 11% uh, zone that doesn't work out. <clears throat> That's with the trend. So here we get, we're going to get chopped up a little bit, all right? Here's an 11% zone with the trend. This one, um, you know, it gives you a little bit, not much. This one again, um, you know, this is 12 points. It gives you a little. Here's a 12% zone that comes, it's against the trend. Comes close to the, to the uh, zone. Here's a 20% zone, it's also with the trend. And then here's an 18 with the trend that would not have worked out. Here's a 20% zone with the trend. So here's where this move actually starts, guys. This is with the trend. This is where you would have been engaging your trade. So you would have, you'd forget all the trades here because you already engaged back here. Probably had a loss here, and then this one becomes a monster. 17% zone. So you get an initial move right here, and then you can see price comes back in go sideways and then up. Anyway, so I think you guys get the idea. And then on Forex, gang, it it works the exact same way. Now, Forex is interesting because until now, there really ha isn't hasn't been a way to measure volume on Forex. But using this, I actually can. And I'm going to look at it in the exact same manner that I'm doing with stocks. It's all the exact same system. So look at the 240-minute chart here. In any zone that's above 15%, you're getting great movement out of these zones. And so then if we come down to our 60-minute and we only want to take the trades where they're overlapping and we have high percentages with the trend, check this out, 31% with the trend, beautiful move out of there. Here's a 28% with, now you can see what happens here. I, I guarantee you this is some kind of news. So you, if, if you're a disciplined trader, you're not holding this trade through that. So you don't have a winner or a loser there. Here's a 23% against the trend. And then I don't have anything through here on, on my 60 minute. Now, let's, here, 22% with the trend, beautiful trade. 33% with the trend, beautiful trade. So you can see, guys, it, here's a 53% with the trend. Now, this actually isn't, this isn't actually 53%. It's because I'm at the end of my um, data. But you can see this, this would definitely be above 15%, but it's not as high as 53, I can tell you that much. Anyway, guys, this is killer. So um, let's let's go down to the 15 minute real quick and see if we have anything. Those are small percentages. Here's a 13% with the trend. Beautiful trade. Here's a 10% and then a 30%. Um, both of these are against the trend, obviously. Here's a 25 with with the trend. There's a 15%. Again, I'm I want I think I want it to be above 15. There's 12 and 14. I would not have been able to catch those. They're with the trend. There's a 15. Let's see if we have any more. 12. Nope. See, so you can see I'm not getting a ton, right? And I'm going to miss a lot of moves, but it doesn't matter. It truly just doesn't matter if I miss the moves. And here, what what's so, just glancing through this chart, what's something that you notice here on the 15? Maybe 15% is too aggressive. 
anything above 10 looks to be killer. So if I if I went down to anything above 10, I'm I'm adding a bunch of trades, some losers like this one, but a lot of winners. Okay, here's a 21% with the trend. Now, this is where I call this wiggle. So how many how much how many ticks from the bottom of the zone am I okay taking a trade? And for me it's two pips, two full pips. And so this is at um 1361, so I'd be okay at, at, at 1363. So that would be two pips, right? And this zone is at 62. It's within one pip. So I would take this trade. That makes sense. And so there you go. You can see if, if I were if I were okay with anything above 10, I would have had a handful of trades in the last few months. That's all I need. And all I got to do is open it up to I have I have t I think 12 or 13 pairs that I that I watch. So all right, gang, um, just so I give you a quick update. Everything's rocking and rolling.